In 1971, at the age of 29, Clarence Clemens met with Bruce Springsteen for the first time. This meeting would eventually lead to the big man joining the band, but to understand why, we have to go back a little bit. Clarence Clemens grew up in a very religious household, mostly listening to gospel music. His father gifted him an alto saxophone at the age of 9, while his uncle bought him his first King Curtis album. And at the age of 18, he had his first studio experience with Tyrone Ashley's funky music machine. Clemens grew up as a black man in the Jim Crow South and experienced racism firsthand, but he never let it limit him. He often played with various musicians, no matter their race, and that's where he found his strength. And on a rainy, windy Saturday night in Ashbury Park, Clarence Clemens opened the door to a bar where a young Bruce Springsteen was playing. He was more than just a sidekick of Bruce Springsteen. He was a larger than life individual, bringing soul to a song where the words of Bruce wouldn't do justice. At some points during the show, Clarence was the star. He bore influence from his hero King Curtis, but his approach to the saxophone was one of a kind. And as he said himself, The heart of it, the spirit of it, is that one note, that same note, night after night, that's the promised land. That's where I belong. That's who I think I am. In the wake of his death, Bruce Springsteen said of Clemens, He loved the saxophone, loved our fans and gave everything he had every night he stepped on stage. We are honored and thankful to have known him and had the opportunity to stand beside him for nearly 40 years. He was my great friend, my partner and with Clarence at my side, my band and I were able to tell a story far deeper than those simply contained in our music. His life, his memory and his love will live on in that story and in our band. Clarence and Bruce protected each other, especially in the beginnings of their relationship. We were united, we were strong, we were righteous, we were unmovable, we were funny, we were corny as hell and as serious as death itself. And we were coming to your town to shake you and to wake you up. It was a story where the scooter and the big man not only busted the city in half, but we kicked ass and remade the city. I'm not just a saxophone player. Clarence Clemens blessed East Street with priceless, ineffable soul. And it all began when he walked into that bar. I stood in the doorway and said, I want to play with your band. And he said, sure, you do anything you want. The first song we did was an early version of Spirit in the Night. Bruce and I looked at each other and didn't say anything. We just knew. We knew we were the missing links in each other's lives. He was what I'd been searching for. And Clarence wasn't the only one who felt this deeper connection. Bruce felt it too. I'm no mystic, but the undertow, the mystery and power of Clarence and my friendship leads me to believe we must have stood together in other, older times, along other rivers and other cities, in other fields, doing our modest version of God's work, work that's still unfinished. So in conclusion, it doesn't matter what you think that should happen. Every decision, every choice that you make, it should be something that you feel deep down from your soul. And when Clarence walked into that bar and met with Bruce for the first time, he felt it.